ever wondered, the causes for diseases? Is the climate responsible? Is the food responsible? Then what's that causes diseases? What's the cause for simple things like cold and cough? It's because of organisms that we cannot see and they are microscopic. That is, they cannot be seen with our naked eyes. They can be seen only under a microscope. Hence, they are called microscopic organisms or microorganisms. They cause diseases in human beings, plants and animals. Although all organisms are not harmful and pathogenic, but still there exist numerous fatal microorganisms in the environment around us which can lead to death. These microorganisms include bacteria, fungi, viruses and protozoa. The knowledge of the microbes and their effects are important to defend them. Let us take a glance at the microorganisms which cause diseases. But let us first discuss the term disease. In simple terms, the term disease means disturbed ease. Oh, that makes sense. That is, we are disturbed when he, we have disease. Microbes make us feel ill or sick. When harmful microorganisms reproduce in our bodies, they can produce harmful substances called toxins, which make us feel ill or in worst case scenario, damage tissues, organs and also the whole body systems. Such disease-causing microorganisms are called pathogens. Some human diseases caused by pathogens are cholera, rabies, mumps, malaria, etc. Even plants and animals are also victims of these microbes. So, now, let us emphasize on some of the disease causing microorganisms. Now, let us discuss the disease causing microorganisms in humans. Pathogens, that is, microorganisms, enter our body through the air we breathe, the water we drink, or the food we eat. They can also get transmitted by direct contact with an infected person or carried through an animal. Thus, the disease that can spread from an infected person to a healthy person through air, water, food or physical contact are called communicable diseases. Examples of such diseases are cholera, common cold, chickenpox and tuberculosis. Let us now take the example of common cold which is spread through air. When a person suffering from common cold sneezes, fine droplets of moisture carrying thousands of viruses are spread in air. The virus may enter body of a healthy person while we breathe the same infected air. Then how do you prevent the spread of communicable diseases? We should use preventive measures like keep a handkerchief on the nose and mouth while sneezing. 
it is always better to keep a distance from the infected person. So, now let us look into some of the other diseases transmitted through air. Tuberculosis Tuberculosis is an infectious disease that usually affects the lungs. It spreads when the affected person sneezes, spits, laughs, talks or coughs. Tuberculosis is caused by a bacteria, Mycobacterium tuberculosis. The infected person shows symptoms of tuberculosis such as coughing, sometimes with mucus or blood. There are chills, fever, night sweats, fatigue, loss of weight and loss of appetite. What are the preventive measures? A few general measures can be taken to prevent the spread of tuberculosis. Avoid close contact with the affected person. This will help to minimize the risk of germ spreading, wearing a mask or covering the mouth. Now let us discuss one more disease that spreads through air that is measles. Measles is an endemic disease meaning it is continually present in a community and many people develop resistance. However, if measles enters an area where the people have never been exposed, the result can be devastating. Measles is caused by virus named rubella. Symptoms of measles are runny nose, dry hacking cough, conjectivities, swollen eyelids, inflamed eyes, watery eyes. Photophobia, that is, sensitivity to light. Sneezing, fever. Fever may drop and then rise again when the rash appears. Coplic spots, very small grayish white spots with bluish white centers in the mouth, inside of cheeks and throat. Rashes. How to prevent measles? Measles can be mainly prevented by avoiding contact with the infected person as measles is known to spread by contact also. People who already had measles are immune and will not get it again. Causes of reinfection are extremely rare. For people who are not immune, there is the measles vaccine. The World Health Organization WHO, says that nearly 600 million children received the measles vaccine between 2000 and 2007, resulting in a 74% drop in global deaths caused by measles. Let us now discuss another disease spread through air, that is, Chicken pox. Chicken pox, also known as varicella, is a highly contagious infectious caused by virus varicella zoster. Although uncomfortable, most people recover within one to two weeks. The symptoms are an ishy rat, its severity varies considerably. Some patients may have just a few spots, while others are covered all over the body. The spots which develop in clusters generally appear on the face, limbs, chest and stomach. Initially, there are small red spots that itch a lot. They may develop into spots with blisters on top. These can become very itchy. Within about 48 hours, the blisters cloud over 
and start drying out. Within about 10 days, the crust falls off on their own. Preventing Chicken Pox Chicken pox can be prevented by avoiding contact with the infected person. People who have already had chicken pox are immune and will not get it again. Causes of reinfection are extremely rare. For people who are not immune, there is the chicken pox vaccine. Now, we will look into a disease called polio. Polio is also known as poliomyelitis and infantile paralysis is a highly contagious viral infection that can lead to paralysis, breathing problems or even death. It is caused by polio virus. Polio in its most debilitating forms displays symptoms such as paralysis and death. However, most people with polio don't display any symptoms or become noticeably sick. When symptoms do appear, they differ depending on the type of polio. Symptoms of polio A loss of muscle reflexes Severe muscle pain and spasms Loose of floppy limbs that are often worse on one side of the body. How to prevent? Polio vaccinations or boosters are highly recommended for anyone who is not vaccinated or unsure whether they are. Our daily basic need is water and it can spread numerous diseases if contaminated. Diseases spread through water. Typhoid. Causative agent is Salmonella typhimurium. It's a bacteria. Typhoid is an infection caused by the bacteria Salmonella typhimurium. The bacterium lives in the intestines and bloodstream of humans. Symptoms of typhoid. The two major symptoms of typhoid are fever and rash. Other symptoms can include weakness, abdominal pain, constipation, headaches. Symptoms might include confusion, diarrhea and vomiting. How to avoid typhoid? The following are some general rules to follow when traveling to help minimize the chance of typhoid infection. Drink bottled water. Be wary of eating anything that has been handled by someone else. Avoid eating at street food stands. Do not have ice in drinks. Avoid raw fruits and vegetables without washing. Next disease that spreads through water is cholera. Mode of transmission is food and water. Cholera is an infectious disease that causes severe watery diarrhea which can lead to dehydration and even death if untreated. Vibrio cholerae, the bacterium that causes cholera, is usually found in food or water contaminated by feces from a person with infection. Common sources include the cholera symptoms, signs and symptoms, rapid heart rate, loss of skin elasticity, dry mucous membranes, low blood pressure, thirst, muscle cramps. If not treated, dehydration can lead to shock and death in a matter of hours. Hepatitis B. Hepatitis B is a virus that infects the liver. Most adults who get it have it a short time and then get better. This is called acute hepatitis B. What causes hepatitis B? Hepatitis B is caused by the hepatitis B virus and mode of transmission is 
water and direct contact. What are the symptoms? Tiredness, mild fever, headache, loss of appetite, feeling sick, belly pain and dark urine. Other symptoms may start to go away after a few weeks. We will now look into disease spread through insects. You might have all heard about the disease malaria. We will now try to know more about malaria. Malaria is a life-threatening blood disease caused by parasites transmitted to humans through the bite of Anopheles mosquito. Once an infected mosquito bites a human and transmits the parasites, those parasites multiply in the host's liver before infecting and destroying red blood cells. Symptoms of malaria Sensation of cold, shivering, fever, headache, vomiting, sweats followed by a return of normal temperature with tiredness, multiple convolutions, deep breathing and respiratory distress, abnormal bleeding and signs of anemia. Prevention of Malaria There is a significant risk of getting malaria if you travel to an affected area. It is very important you take precautions to prevent the disease. Malaria can often be avoided using the ABCD approach to prevention which stands for Awareness of Risk Find out whether you are at risk of getting malaria Bite prevention. Avoid mosquito bites by using insect repellent, covering your arms and legs and using a mosquito net. Check whether you need to take malaria prevention tablets. If you do, make sure you take the right ones. Diagnosis. Seek immediate medical advice if you have malaria symptoms. Thank you.